Hello my friends, you know the new year is upon us now and I find that with the new year it's a great time to go back to the basics, such as vanilla Rimworld. Well, vanilla-ish, yeah, okay look, I have a few mods installed but fret you not my friends, these are all cosmetic, simply here to make things look better than they already do. Also if you hear a slight echo, unfortunately I am in a totally different room recording and we're just gonna have to deal with it so I apologize, but we are starting with the basic three crash landed survivors who are actually named Chels, Freddy, and Rodeon respectively, and as you can see here are their skills and traits and all that great stuff as well. So to get us started here, on day zero of course we began equipping our weapons and armor and anything else like that that we had of course, and then we immediately began by deconstructing some runes and removing the floors of said runes before going to bed. Ah yes, sleeping beneath the beautiful desert stars. Oh yeah, I also want to mention we also have a pet fox as you can see see. That, that's about it. I tried using the fertility option to show me where the most fertile land was here in the desert so I would know where I wanted to build our base so we wouldn't have to go too far for planting things and none of the dirt was really all that fertile. I want to mention as well I want to play in a desert because I normally don't play in deserts. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to kind of do a, a series or just a video in a desert so here you go. We started using the granite and slate and steel and basically anything else we had at our disposal to go ahead and build our base, I ended up going with something of a spherical shape because I just kind of liked it. We also started finally planting our first crops, and y'all already know I started planting some rice because, well, it's super easy to grow, of course. Unfortunately, though, this was rudely interrupted by a mad iguana. Said iguana was indeed very mad. Mad indeed to believe that he could try and kill us. Ha ha ha. He chased us around for a hot moment, and then we beat him in the head with bullets until, you know, he took a little dirt nap. Not too long after that, we had the opportunity to name our settlement as well as our faction. I ended up calling us the Desert Dunes, and we named this place. Duneville, naturally. Now by this point we still had a good bit of stone block lying around so I decided that we would use it to try and beautify our bedrooms and hopefully this would prevent anyone from having a mental break by looking at their beautiful floors. Truthfully though anything was better than that disgusting sand. Speaking of which we ended up finding a beautiful sandy little patch next to the base and the wind turbine to try and build a storage room. However this was rudely interrupted by a raid by the pest pirates who just so happened to be our waster pirates here. Now now at this point I did realize that the guns and whatnot didn't really match with the apparel so I ended up adding a new mod. I ended up going with the vanilla weapons retextured continued mod and I think it looks a lot better. But now it was time for us to kick the ever living shit out of this filthy waster pirate which we promptly did of course. But just before we could reach down and cut her throat and watch her bleed out in the sand, I realized she had a pretty decent skill set. She was just what we were looking for, so instead of killing her, we decided that we would capture her and try to recruit her. However, she did have a fairly high resistance, so that was going to take quite a while. So, in the meantime, we would continue working on our beautiful storage area, which thankfully didn't take quite as long as I thought, and we ended up throwing the roof on just before dark. I also decided to throw a bed and some stone flooring into our our fourth bedroom here, I thought it would make for a much better prison than our dining room and hallways. And you know what, turns out looks like it did. Of course with the room being much more suitable, this will also make it much easier to recruit Sam. But of course recruiting Sam's not going to do us any damn good if we all starve to death, so we ended up building a nice, beautiful, wonderful electric stove to cook all of our meals on. Normally in these videos or series I'll start with a campfire, but it's so damn hot here in the desert I didn't really think that would be necessary. Some time later we ended up having the ambush night quest. So essentially a noble person was being chased by a man hunting monkey. Normally I don't accept these, but this person turned out to be the father of our colonist Freddy. So obviously we had to help. It wasn't too long after the father of Freddy arrived that this man hunting monkey followed suit shortly there behind. We all lined up and started taking shots at it, eventually killing it. Ah, just another good deed. Father and son reunited once more. Unfortunately not for long though, as a shuttle arrived shortly thereafter to pick him up. It was immediately after that though we ended up having a ceremony quest. Essentially we could get a sign link for Freddy and whatnot and I normally don't do these but I thought what if we do this and we just steal all the gear from the Imperials that come by killing them. Well apparently that didn't work out because they were extremely heavily armed. So unfortunately since we couldn't just kill everybody and take all their charge rifles and stuff like that I decided to go through with the ceremony but I'm not gonna lie to you I don't really give a shit about the silence and stuff like that even though Oh yeah, I probably should, but I never use anything like that in this, so 
sorry. <laughs> However, though, if it does make you feel better, the bestowing ceremony was apparently honorable. I mean, that's something, I suppose. Something not so honorable, though, is the fact that our freezer is completely empty and our rice is still growing. So that means we're going to have to hunt some emu, maybe some ostrich, anything we can get our filthy little mitts on. I also built a stone cutting table and began putting a good focus into cutting up plenty of stone blocks, as there's not a lot of cacti here that we can actually use for wood, unfortunately. Although we did end up using a little bit of it to add on to our storage room to kind of build a production area. Obviously, of course, within this production area would also be a research table where Chels would spend a lot of time researching new technologies such as batteries. Chels wasn't exactly great at researching though, which makes me very happy to say we ended up recruiting Sam fairly quickly as well, and Sam was one hell of a researcher, so we immediately set her out to go and do that for us. Obviously, as I mentioned, she had a much higher skill, so this meant that she was much faster and much better at it, and eventually we did end up getting those sweet succulent batteries as we wanted. I decided that we would go ahead and just use our storage room also as a battery room as well, and I ended up picking a beautiful variation of the battery. Also, I forgot to take out this windows of sound for some reason. Yeah, that's what we in the business call a little whoopsie daisy. Anyhow, though, I ended up building some end tables and dressers in each of our colonists' room to just try and, you know, make them nicer, basically. And things were going pretty well until we ended up having another raid from the Fur of Kotar. You know what? It's a bunch of furries. Well, a bunch of furry people, I should say. Actually, it was just one furry person. We all lined up and started taking pot shots at them until eventually we took them down. They didn't actually die, but also they didn't have very good stats or traits, so we used our finishing move. Ha! <laughs> yeah, the old shotgun to the face, that'll get you every time. We finally started using these stone blocks that we've been cutting and storing to build a wall to the eastern side of the base to make sure no enemies can come through there anymore. And of course, while we're on the topic of defenses, we also began building some sandbags and barricades and also just hauling a bunch of stone chunks to try and add some cover effectiveness. And also, we ended up researching solar panels during this time before continuing on this extensive work into defenses. Since our primary source of power currently, the wind turbine can be a bit hit or miss with its power output, I decided to build a solar panel as well. But my friends, just like that, it is now day 25, and if you're new around these parts, you may not know that every 25 days during one of these videos, I will do a custom-made boss battle for our colonists to take on. For our very first boss battle, I decided to go with Hog Jones. He's actually a very well-known and renowned pig pirate here in these parts, wielding an SMG as well as several bionic body parts, as well as a death acidifier to make sure we don't steal any of those bionics. Now, of course, as he approached, we immediately began engaging in combat with him, but I must say that I didn't anticipate that he would be this strong, so he may have been a boss better suited for day 50, or even maybe day 75. As you can see, he easily took down Sam, Freddy, and eventually even Chels as she tried to engage in melee combat. He then would decide to try and flee and kidnap her as well, but luckily, Rodion was able to stop this. Ooh, that was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. I almost ended my own run with my very own boss battle that I created. Luckily, though, nobody died. Well, that's not entirely true, though. Our fox actually ended up dying. I suppose it's a good thing I hadn't really grown attached to him, that way we won't have any trouble eating him now. Thanks to the death acidifier on Hog Jones, he didn't really drop anything except for a plasteel axe. That was really the only thing of value, as Chels was one hell of a meleeer. I realize it may seem a bit strange of me to put a death acidifier on these bosses and whatnot, but of course the reason I'm doing that is because they have some very overpowered gear or bionics, things like that, that I don't want us to get our hands on because it would feel like cheating. But now with that being said, it was time for us to do a little bit of trading with the local Outlander factions. We didn't have much to sell, but we made a decent little bit of silver. Back home, however, it was very cold. To my surprise, this is a desert. I wasn't really thinking that it was going to get all that cold in fall and winter, but I stand corrected apparently, so we began building some vents between our rooms and building heaters as well. And don't worry, I did notice the giant gaping hole in the side of our house, just not right away. 
I decided that I would end up sending yet another caravan back out to trade with the Outlanders because they had an assault rifle that I wanted to purchase and I had a few other things to sell. Unfortunately though, I did accidentally end up selling our revolver like a big dummy. I don't know how I managed to do that. Back home once more though, I ended up building a bit of an enclosed farming space since it's so damn cold we needed a sun lamp and a heater if we were going to eat this winter. Before we could plant any rice though, we had some very nice and kind tribes people who we decided to imprison because we wanted to rob them of their nice warm coats as well as food and weapons. Unfortunately, as one might imagine, this did make their gentle tribe faction hostile towards us and this is really my fault because I hadn't planned on this desert being ice cold, which I mean I could have figured that out, but I'm stupid. Speaking of angry tribes people, we actually have one of them coming to raid us. The poor dumb animal only had a short bow and I, I mean obviously we beat the shit out of them very easily. Their name was Matt, not that that really mattered, because we didn't care about their life and we actually planned on taking it along with their belongings. Speaking of lives ending, hopefully ours won't be anytime soon, as soon as we can actually get this damn dirty rice to grow, which didn't take too awful long. It's times like these that I really miss the tilled soiled mods, but we're not allowed to use them because this is vanilla. Ish. Anywho though, a little bit of time later, we ended up finishing microelectronics. Now, for whatever reason, I completely forgot to build a comms console as well as a trade beacon until later on, so I'm sorry. Hey, hey, hey though, something I did not forget to build was a prison, something that we were going to desperately need if we were going to begin increasing the population around this damn colony. Which, as one might imagine, I would indeed like to do. Something else I'd like to do, of course, is try to ensure that we don't die by day 50 or around or on day 50 of course so I began building some walls above our defenses as well as some spike traps and got rid of some mountains that they were using for cover. We also ended up building a high-tech research table and also continued using our normal research table as well when anyone had free time and we started down the very long path to gun turrets. Believe it or not though, we ended up having yet another raid. It seems like we're getting a lot of raids here in this vanilla 100 days, but anyhow it was a bunch of impids who were planning an attack on us. This time around, I would actually send our colonists out to try and attack them preemptively. This did invoke them to try and do a strike against us, but by this time many of them were injured and we ended up defeating them. So all in all, a very quick and easy raid. Some good news after the raid though, we ended up having a very large flock of chickens joining us and obviously I couldn't care less about trying to farm them for eggs so we immediately began slaughtering every single one of them and stuffing them in our freezer. Unfortunately though this was immediately followed by some devastating news that Rodion and Freddy both ended up having the plague. This was also very unfortunate because it was coming just before day 50. And as you all well know with day 50 that means it has been yet another quarter and that also means it's time for a boss battle, so here's hoping they don't kill us before the plague does. This here is Bad Sally, an elite waster sniper who obviously also has mini bionics and things like that and is one hell of a shot. The problem here was that Bad Sally had an extreme range advantage on us, so we had to try and hide behind our walls, but she immediately shot and took down Sam. She started trying to rush our colonist and this made me extremely nervous, so I started to try and run through the door, but obviously it took forever to get through that. and then I thought why the hell not just send Chels through to try and chop her up with the axe and eventually we pinned her into a corner next to our base. Unfortunately for Chels, Bad Sally used her sniper rifle like a club and beat her down to the ground. Luckily though, Rodion ran in, grabbed the plasteel axe and went to town, immediately killing her afterwards. And yet again, I feel that I came extremely close to ruining my very own run here, but I suppose that is the purpose of the boss battles, to really spice things up, isn't it? I'm pretty sure our colonists felt extremely spiced up as they were tending to their wounds. But speaking of tending, unfortunately, Freddy's plague was a bit too much to bear and he ended up succumbing to it. I do truly feel that this too was a direct result of having to deal with the boss battle as his immunity was so close and if maybe he got to rest a bit more, he would have survived. We ended up digging a shallow grave in the sand for him just above the base. And of course, obviously, we ended up honoring his life in the form of a funeral and it turned out to be quite heartwarming. Funny enough though, it wouldn't be too long after that we would actually have a quest 
called Cat's Run's Breakout, where we would actually be able to rescue a prisoner who could take the place of Freddy. I wasn't exactly super eager to replace him per se, but we did need an extra set of hands, so of course we ended up traveling there. The prisoner camp was only guarded by three impids, so as Chels was trying to break down through the back wall, I had Rodion and Sam begin firing at them, killing several of the impids. One of them did end up escaping, but to be honest, I didn't really care as we now had Ketsron as part of our team. Welcome aboard, little buddy. Obviously, of course, after rescuing her, we immediately began heading all the way back home, and after arriving, we allowed her to begin equipping weapons and armor and basically anything she wanted from our storage room. I also ended up getting a decent look at her skills. Looks like she's mostly construction and social, but she has a burning passion for medical and intellectual as well, so we might let her do some research. Sometime later, though, shocker, we have yet another raid. I swear, I can't remember the last time I'd done a video or series where I've had this many raids going on, but, you know, whatever. We have more people coming to attack us, and we're going to begin fighting them. They actually had some decent weapons and armor here, so we had to be quite careful. I ended up trying to focus on the one with grenades, taking them out first, and then focusing on the other two, and this seemed to work for the most part. However, though, after killing two of them, the third one decided it would be a good idea to try and flee, but I was not having that, so I sent Ketsron out to try and catch him. And catch him indeed she did, with her bow and arrow. She had performed such a good job out on the battlefield today, I decided that I would give her an auto pistol, even though her shooting skill was shit. Then for quite a bit of time, I decided that we would begin putting a heavy focus back into defenses, especially into our walls. We had cut up plenty of stone, so I began building a massive wall to the south of our base. And then for a while, I just kind of kicked back and watched them finish up the research that would be required for us to then finish up gun turrets, which eventually we finally finished. Now, of course, gun turrets are not always going to be our saving grace, but obviously, on occasion, they can very well make or break a fight. And of course, since they only cost a few tidbits of steel and components, they were well worth having. We also built some barricades around them and stuffed some stone chunks around them as well for extra cover. It was also during this time as well that we had an iguana self-tame, and I wasn't too concerned about having animals, but I did like him, so I ended up naming him Todd. Why Todd, you might ask? That's a good question. Moving on, we ended up continuing our extensive work on building walls. This whole damn video has been me building walls to the east, to the west, to the south, to the north, just uh, anywhere I can really. We also had our very first dromedaries into the desert here, and a sensible person might try to tame them so they can ride them around or use them for hauling during caravans, but I decided to shoot them and begin eating them. The only thing I sense is camel meat in our tummies. I just realized that in the previous clip I said that a sensible person would try to tame them so that they can ride them around, but I realized that that's only possible with the Giddy Up mods or Giddy Up 2 mod, so you, you can tell I haven't played vanilla in a very long time. But hey, would you look at that, it is now day 75, three quarters of the way there, and I can't believe it, baby. This time around for the boss battle, I thought it could be fun if I'd done two boss battle bosses that were actually a bit weaker than the previous two that we had done. These two are impid siblings, one of them with a triple rocket launcher and the other with a massive warhammer. Of course, they have all the bionics and yada yada. I had done this because, you know, with the previous two boss battles, they were basically extremely hard to defeat, but this time around, it wasn't really the case, as they immediately began focusing on our turrets, which gave us ample enough time to begin attacking them. And it was because of this we managed to kill the melee sister impid, and then the older brother began to try and flee from us. Obviously, of course, we immediately began trying to track him down to murder him, not because we wanted his gear, it wasn't like we could take it anyway, unless we just downed him instead of killing him, and now that I think about it, it would have been a good idea, but unfortunately, regardless, he ended up getting away. Now that the threat was neutralized, though, we would begin taking some time to repair our turrets as well as our defenses, and also build on an extra gun turret with barricades and stone chunks and, uh, you know, the whole nine yards. It was also around this time that I realized we had a gorlin pod that sprouted, so of course we harvested that and we ended up planting it into a tree and we let Chels connect to said tree that way we could try and spawn some Dryads. 
However, during our connection ceremony to the tree, we had yet another raid. Oh my god, it's like they never end. Regardless though, after I checked it out and realized that they were going to wait for a little while, we went ahead and finished up the connection ceremony and I went with the Klar Dryads. Now with that completed, it was time for us to take on this raid of these filthy sons of bitches. They were actually coming at us from multiple different angles, but thankfully for us, since we had three turrets that could draw their attention, it it was pretty light work. And that's all the attention I'm going to give that raid because it's just like all the others. However, we did actually have one of them named Tot that we would capture as they had a really good mining skill. I decided that I was going to recruit Tot instead of enslaving Tot, which kind of looking back on it now, I do wish that I had enslaved them because it wouldn't have taken near as long and all they were really going to do was mining. Regardless though, we needed to fix up the prison a little bit, so we added a dresser, a real bed, an end table, all that great stuff. And then, believe it or not, I began working on more walls. If there's one thing throughout this video that's been extremely consistent other than raids, it has been my fascination with building walls. I know this seems silly and I keep bringing it up and I keep touching on it, but there is a reason. For you see, my friends, all the walls that I have been building has led to this. This will ensure that raiders, unless they are sappers, will have to come from the left side. Meaning it is essentially guaranteed that they will have to go through us and our gun turrets. Some time later though, we ended up having an ancient complex, but this was no ordinary ancient complex. This was the type of ancient complex where there's most likely a dead person in a casket with one of those special mech links, and we really wanted that, so of course we went there looking for it. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know how to pronounce the word. Is it Mechanator, Mechanator? I don't know how to pronounce things, and I get roasted in the comments, and also I've actually never went to one of these complexes before, so this was all new to me. It did, however, seem pretty similar to most other ancient complexes, except there wasn't all that much there. There were, of course, unstable fuel nodes that exploded. We had to deconstruct the door so that we didn't get cooked inside. Of course, though, we immediately went back in and cracked open the casket to try and get a hold of that sweet, succulent mech link. Unfortunately, though, after doing so, we were ambushed by a mech. It appeared to be a tiny little robotic fellow with a shotgun, so we, uh, you know, just kind of shot at it back, and, you know, eventually we killed it. Nothing too special. But with the immediate threat neutralized, you know, except for the massive fire that was burning in the other three rooms, we were finally able to crack open the skull, get the mech link out, and begin heading back home. After returning home, I decided to give Rodion the mech link, so now he was actually connected with some type of lifter mech that fell from the sky and basically would begin hauling things for us, which was pretty wonderful. Obviously, of course, this then prompted me to go ahead and begin research on some basic mech tech so we can recharge the little fella. Then for a good bit of time, I just kind of sat back and watched our colony run all by itself. But then this was interrupted by, you guessed it, yet another raid by a bunch of waster pirates who were actually coming in separate groups. And I think this was actually one of the top raids throughout this entire 100 days that I was quite concerned with. They were actually pretty well armed and I was doing my best to try and take them out with grenades and try to get them to focus heavily on our turrets. We had managed to kill enough members in one of the groups that they decided to flee and then finally after a few of the others hit spike traps and got blasted by us, they too decided to do the same. They did however leave one member behind who had a really good construction, mining, planting, and crafting skill, so we decided to capture them and enslave them. Oh, remember how earlier I said I forgot to build a trade beacon in comms console? Well, guess what? I did end up remembering to do that. It was during this time that we were building things and doing stuff like that that we actually managed to enslave our waster pirate, which didn't take long at all to be honest with you, and we immediately put them to work and made them a collar to try and reduce their suppression fall rate per day. Late one night, we also had an exotic goods trader ship in the atmosphere, so we decided to do a little bit of trading with them, and we actually ended up buying a prosthetic leg from them. Now, the reason for this is because Sam was actually missing her left leg, so we decided that we would try to install the prosthetic leg, which was a bit risky because our medical skill at the highest was five, and it did not pay off. 
so a huge waste of time, money, and resources. But truly, is that not the beauty of RimWorld? Sometimes you install a prosthetic leg perfectly, and sometimes you accidentally botch the entire thing, stabbing the patient in the chest. At one point, I noticed our prison slash slave quarters were actually freezing cold, and we were actually having frostbite appear on Tot, so I decided that we needed to put a heater and a vent in there, which fixed it. Tot seemed pretty thankful that we saved him from losing all of his toes to frostbite, because he ended up joining us not too long thereafter. And you know, we were pretty gosh darn thankful for that. Something else we were pretty gosh darn thankful for was our new Clarge Riads. I ended up naming them Steve and Betty, and I really have no idea as to why, but I am glad that they're here, even if they took forever. Especially since they're going to be extremely useful for the boss battle of day 100. Yes, indeed, my friends, we have finally made it. I'm going to level with you here. I ended up making a pig person in some Phoenix Power Armor with a nice helmet and a Hell Sphere Cannon, but the Hell Sphere Cannon ended up not really working, and I didn't realize that until a bit too late. Basically, I wanted to make the last boss battle extremely difficult, but this ended up just being a giant pig in really powerful armor beating the shit out of us with a Hellsphere cannon, not actually shooting it. So then I thought, well, hell, I'll just spawn in three others with some charge cannons and th that'll do it. As you might imagine, this was extremely difficult and not really what I was going for. They immediately killed one of our colonists. They then began going throughout our base trying to hunt down our remaining members. I tried to get as many of them inside as I could and we tried to run into the freezer where we could hide. But for now my friends, this is where we leave off. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I love you guys ever so much. Thank you ever so much for watching. Sorry about the semi clickbaity title as it wasn't extremely vanilla. It wasn't, you know, perfectly vanilla. It was vanilla-ish with some cosmetic mods as it were. But truly I hope you guys did have a good time just as I did. And once again, thank you ever so much for watching. I love you guys. I will see you next time. Goodbye.